13,256 Ks on the Sunlight V60. Is it any good? Let's go find out. Riders and drivers, welcome to Sands Bikes, where we only talk e-bikes and sometimes camper vans. If you are looking for the smallest camper van on the market with a toilet and a shower, you need to watch this long-term review of the Sunlight V60 and the overall feeling of being away in Europe in a reasonably small van for six weeks. And also how much Betsy costs in total and if it's worth buying in Germany, as we did, we did save a bit of money, but it was quite a lot of hassle. I'm also gonna go through all the extras we put on, and at the end, the million dollar question, if we had the money again today in our pocket, would we buy the same van? So riders and drivers, let's get into it. And also wanna mention, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, it really does mean a lot. I mainly talk about e-bike stuff, but also camper van, I'm starting to do a little bit more of that because I think it's quite a bit of crossover. And also, if you wanna skip forward to a chapter, like if you wanna just see how much it costs, well then you can do that. On the timeline, you just skip forward, super easy. The Sunlight V60 is actually around 20 centimeters narrower and 20 centimeters lower than most of the small camper vans on the market. And let me tell you, that really means a lot when you're driving in small towns in Europe. But I have got stuck a few times, so I definitely wouldn't want anything wider or taller. So how does she drive? And I know that's a massive concern for a lot of people buying camper vans. Well, I'm gonna say the first two days I got this van, I picked it up and I thought I made a mistake. I was like, whoa, I cannot believe you don't need a specific driver's license for this van. But after a week or two, I really got used to it. And now I drive this like a little car. It's very, very easy to drive around. And we went for the base model V60 with 120 horsepower. And I was kind of umming and ahhing about going for the next model up, which is 5,000 euros more. And it has a few more bells and whistles, but the main thing I was worried about, it's got 140 horsepower. So a bit more horsepower. But I'm not the type of person that would speed in this van. I go 110 tops and 120 horsepower for me was absolutely fine, even in the Swiss Alps, and the French Alps, absolutely fine. And another major concern for a lot of people, how much are these big things gonna to cost to run? So it's got an 80 liter tank, and we're roughly getting around 800 to 1,000 kilometers from one tank. So it's costing us in Spain around 100 euros, which I think is pretty impressive for such a big, heavy van. And one thing that happened about 5,000 Ks into the trip is an ad blue light came on and look my last van was 20 years old and i didn't even know what ad blue was very basic i know uh, but if you don't know what ad blue is it's kind of a bit of uh, liquid that you add to the motor which cleans the emissions somehow i think that's how it works but my main concern was like it, maybe it was like oil and you needed to stop the van straight away and add the ad blue but after doing some research you actually have around 500 Ks to add your ad blue, so don't stress out. You just go off to the next petrol station and put it in, and it takes 20 liters to fill up that tank. Now let's head into the van and do the full tour. Okay, so now we're in the cab, and how does the Sunlight V60 drive? Well, it's based on a Fiat Ducato, and as I said, it's got 120 horsepower. For me, I found it to be ample power, and also, it's comfortable. I wouldn't say it's amazingly comfortable. The seats I would give for driving, maybe like a six out of 10, you know, they, they, they're just not that well made. They, I don't know, they're okay. I wouldn't say they're the best seats. And the steering wheel, uh, it's all a little bit plasticky, but riders and drivers, remember this is a pretty budget camper van. It's actually one of the cheapest camper vans you can buy. So it's all good. Um, I really like cruise control. I've never had that before and that's an absolute win. So you just set it at 110 and it stays there steady even when you go up and down hills. I love it. And the van at 110 is really stable. Okay, if it's windy, you do get thrown around a little bit, but I've been really impressed 
how this drives on the open road. One thing I wanna mention about the gearbox, so it's a six speed automatic transmission. And for me, I found the gears really close together. And I mean, it is a little bit easy to, when you wanna to go to six, you actually go into fourth. So I would like the gears to be a little bit further apart, but I mean, that's a small thing. I mean, I've got used to it now. But another thing I noticed, when you're in sixth gear on the motorway with cruise control on and at going about 110, your revs are actually sitting around three and a half thousand. And for me, that's a little bit too high. I would kind of like that, that fifth and sixth gear to be a little bit higher. You know, like for first and second, it is brilliant. I've gone up some really steep hills in first, no problem. But I think the ratio at five and six should be a little bit higher. When buying the V60, we actually got the upgrade kit with the GPS, with the reversing camera, with the awning and the bike rack. And I'm gonna say out there riders, definitely get a reversing camera when you get your camper van. Just get it fitted straight away. It's really necessary. And I was really surprised for such a modern new van, we don't have reversing or parking sensors which I was really surprised. And I think that's a bit of a fail, like most modern cars have that these days, but the V60 doesn't have it. So overall, it drives well, it feels good. The seats could be a little bit more comfortable. Now onto the lounge room and how we set it up when we're not traveling. Okay, so the lounge room has two swivel chairs, left and right, passenger and driver. And then we've got a double seat at the back, which, in my opinion, would be okay for a small family, like two young kids and the parents, but I wouldn't want to sit four people in this lounge room, four adults in this lounge room, it's just not big enough. And to the left, we've got our wardrobe where we store all the fresh water, dirty clothes. And up the top, we've got our clothes. We actually added an extra shelf to have more space in there. Overall, the lounge room is really good. I'm gonna say a few things that aren't so good is with the passenger seat, it's actually got two leisure batteries underneath it. So the passenger seat sits up around 10 centimeters higher, maybe 10 centimeters, maybe five centimeters higher than the driver's seat. And for my wife, Bea, who's quite a bit shorter than me, when we're actually driving, she needs to step or it's a little bit uncomfortable, kind of like a child using a big toilet. Her legs just hang down, super uncomfortable. And I'm going to say the same thing when you set up as in the lounge room, because my feet don't really touch the ground. And I'm going to say like, it's not really comfortable. We need to do some mods. We're going to actually put in a false floor to bring that up. And I'm going to say when you're in a small camper van, six meters long, this is not the most comfortable lounge room out there. I would have expected them to get it a little bit more right. It's okay, and we will do some mods, and we will make it better. Overall, Sunlight have done a fantastic job with the styling of this van, I think. The upholstery is really good. I like the uh, the wood color, it's really nice. It's, it's very modern. It's very much for a younger couple, I think. We also have double USB here, which is a great ad. We also have a 240 plug underneath, which we've actually added a four plug up here, which is really handy because Bear and I do do a fair bit of the YouTube work right here, which is interesting while we're traveling. We also have the window here that opens up. We have a blind and a fly screen, which fly screens are absolutely necessary in summer. Okay, so now we're into the kitchen and I can't really say much about this kitchen. It's a small kitchen, super functional, and I actually really like the kitchen. So we've got two cupboards here where we keep all our food. We've got a reasonably big fridge, which is enough for two people for about four or five days. We've got a nice workspace here. Then the glass opens up. I wouldn't personally put glass here because I reckon I'm gonna break it at some point. Uh, I've dropped like the oil down here and it almost shattered. So you open up that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna mention, you've got a nice big window here, which is really good when you're frying and cooking, you have that open. You open this up, you've got three gas hobs, and it works pretty well. This part actually comes off, which makes it nice to clean, and Bear and I didn't know that for the first three months, so that's handy. Goes back in like that. One thing I don't really like about the hob is a bit of a bad design here, because like all the food and crap goes in here and it's really hard to clean. So that's a bit of a fail. 
But I know this actual whole system here is really well sold, so they could definitely do something about that. Then we've got the cutlery jaw here. We've got another big storage spot here. I'm not sure if you can see it from there. You can't, but they put in a tiny, tiny bin. And we use it for storage, but we've actually put in another bin over here, a bigger bin by the front door because you know, you can't have a tiny bin when you're traveling. You need to have a decent sized bin. And for power wise, we've got 240 here, another 240 here and a 12 volt here. And I want to mention the fridge is a three-way system. So it runs on gas, 240 and 12. And it runs really good on 240 and it runs really good on gas, but terrible on 12. So when we're traveling, we run 100% on gas. And I'll show you what we use there because normally you're not supposed to travel with gas. But with this little connector, you are allowed to travel with gas and it's 100% safe. And now onto the bathroom. It is a fantastic design. We have a shower room and a toilet all in one. The shower folds back and you have your shower room. And it takes around 20 minutes to warm up the water. And trust me, riders and drivers out there, the water is hot and the shower is good. Pressure's okay. And we're getting around six to eight showers from the water deposit. You also have a very small sunroof in there, which is pretty important to let some fresh air in after you go into the toilet, and a small cabinet for all your bits and pieces. It really is perfect for two travelers. It's quick, it's easy. I probably would, as I said, make that fresh water and the toilet deposit a bit bigger so you could travel for a few more days without having to fill up. Onto the bedroom, and I'm 183 centimeters and I can fit perfectly into this bed. But first, let's have a look at the Worst thing of this fan is the ladder. It's always in the way. You take it out when you're cooking, you forget to put it back. Yeah, you take it out when you go into the bathroom because the door doesn't open. Definitely the worst part. I mean, there's no real way to get around it with this design, but if anyone thinks of anything or anyone has a workaround for this, let me know. Underneath the bed is a massive storage spot where we put all the toilet paper, all the canned food, the beer, the wine, the camera gear, everything goes under there. It is a massive space. So I'm super comfortable now in my bedroom, in the camper van. The mattress, I'm gonna say is comfortable if you wanna go for a couple of weeks, but if you're gonna go on a long trip, like three or four months, I'd probably change it to something a bit higher quality. The mattress measures 194, by 130 by 140. It is perfect for Barra and I. We like to cuddle a little bit in the evening, so no problem for us. Uh, yeah, it's, it's big enough, but it's definitely not a massive bed. You also have two big storage cabinets at the back here, which we don't use that much because we actually have a fair bit of storage and they're not that comfortable to use because when you want something, you gotta get up on the stairs, up into the bed and then get into the storage. And also above the bed, we have two reading lights and a bookshelf and a window by the feet and a skylight just here, which really is good to keep airflow during the evening. I'm gonna say overall, I'm really happy with the bedroom. I'm gonna also say that they put in the reading lights, but I would have loved to seen two or three USB points here because I think in 2022, everyone's got an ipad and an iphone or a smartphone and they want to charge their phones next to them in the evening because they want to read on them or they want to go on the internet before they go to bed so definitely that would be good and also i wouldn't mind seeing a small window above the bookshelf just to give a little bit more airflow the air can get a little bit stale here so that would be nice and it might be something that we'll put in at a later date. And now onto the garage, probably one of the most important parts for me as a mountain biker and check it out riders. So in here we have my Kinevo SL, fantastic bike. So what we've done to the garage to make it a little bit more livable, you can actually fit a full size motorbike in here and it has like a wheel tray, which is good for a motorbike but really terrible if for a mountain biker. We can actually fit three bikes in the garage with the front wheel off and the pedals off. I normally travel with two, but as I said, yeah, we put in this false floor. Underneath the floor, we have long-term storage like tires, brake pads, all the tools that we need, even my bike stand. We've also attached a rope to make the chairs and the table 
sit up onto the back rest there. We've also got a light here, which is really handy in the evening and a 24 volt plug, which is amazing because you can charge your e-bikes from there with our off-grid system, which we're gonna show you now. Overall, this is a fantastic garage. And for me, as I said, this is one of the main reasons we bought the camper van. Raiders, I'm really sorry, we're back in the studio. We had some type of technical problem and we lost the conclusion. What a shame, because it was absolutely freezing out there, but we're in the warm studio. And trust me, loads of good information to come on costing and if I would buy the V60 again. So one thing I wanna mention with the heater, it's a gas heater, so it runs off the two gas bottles. And for me, I think it's okay. It sounds a little bit like a hairdryer. Um, it is quite annoying. The van is very well insulated. So what we do normally is put it on for like half an hour in the morning to warm up the van and about half an hour in the evening. And that's about it. But we do live in Spain and we generally don't use the camper van that much in winter. So we bought the van in Germany for two reasons. One, I thought it'd be a little bit cheaper. And two, because there was absolutely no stock in Spain at the time. And let me give you a breakdown of what it costs to get it registered in Spain, because probably a few people are thinking of the same. I'm gonna say, like, I probably wouldn't recommend doing it again. If I had my time again, I probably wouldn't. The biggest negative for me was I couldn't get full comprehensive insurance until the car was legally registered in Spain. So it was quite scary. I did drive it a few times, but you have this brand new toy that you wanna play with, but then you're scared to drive it for two months while you get the registration. Okay, we probably did save between like five and 10 grand maybe. I would say I wouldn't do it again, but these were the costs. 1,500 euros for delivery. We were gonna pick it up from Germany, but with COVID, we actually couldn't cross the border. 2,400 euros of importation taxes. And look, we had a few people look at this and actually no one could really give us a real number until we actually did it. We were actually told it was gonna be free or then it was gonna be 500 euros or then it was gonna be 600 or 800 and it ended up being 2,400. So if you're gonna do the same thing, you're more or less in for that much money. 300 euros to get the gas and the electricity certificate in Spain, and 350 euros for the ITV, which is the Spanish registration. So all said and done, just over 40,000 euros. But we did also add a few things, which I think are absolute necessary when buying a camper van. So let's get into that. Now this is a big one for us, and I'd have to say it's a fail from Sunlight and from a lot of the other camper van manufacturers. The security in these fans is terrible. Like you have probably very similar locks at a gymnasium that you get on these cars. And you know, you've got all your life in there and you, you know, a lot of the time you've got bikes, cameras, all that stuff. And you've got these tiny little locks. So we put extra deadlocks on the front and on the back which cost us around 300 euros. And then we put in a really, really good alarm system, which cost us around 1,000 euros. And it's brilliant because you can actually turn off the internal alarm. So when you're sleeping, you can actually secure the whole perimeter of the car and it will be triggered if anyone tries to bump the car, tries to open a door from movement. It is sensational and we do feel really safe when free camping. And we also put in a killer off-grid system, which has 200 amp leisure batteries, 180 solar power on the roof, a 2000 watt inverter, and this sort of fast charging alternator cable, which charges the leisure batteries four times faster. That cost us around 2000 euros from Caravan in K2 in Madrid. They did an amazing job and they're really nice guys. They actually installed it just before summer so we could go and do the EWS. We actually can charge two electric mountain bikes off grid in one day. Shot the video the other day. If you're interested in that, check it out. And lucky last, we put in a Trimmer dual control system, which actually allows you to drive while using gas. It's a safety system. And I would say this is 100% necessary because the fridge does not work very well on 12 volts. And Bear and I use it always on gas or 24 and it works amazing. 
Okay, so that's it for the Sunlight V60 completely set up off grid with security, charging e bikes, all that. And the total cost was 43,900 euros, which I think is a fantastic price for this type of vehicle. Now, down to the million dollar question if I was given my 43,900 euros again, would I buy the Sunlight V60 or something else today? I'm gonna to say 100% I would buy the Sunlight V60. I'm very happy with my purchase. As I said, some things aren't perfect, but we do need to realize we are buying sort of a base model V60, and it is something that I kind of see work in progress, like I'm gonna make my own changes over the coming years, and I dare say Barra and I will have this van for the next 10 or 20 years. And that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive look at the Sunlight V60. I thought it might be interesting for someone that's looking to buy a similar van. Definitely gets a thumbs up from Sam's Bikes. And riders, thanks so much for watching. If you have not already subscribed to Sam's Bikes, click the notifications, click the like button. It really does help out with those algorithms. And if you have any questions on anything on the V60 or e-bikes in general, hit me up, love to help. And you know, stay safe out there and we're going to see you next week.